This is Palm Sunday, the first day of Holy Week. And we begin a week of worship services and observances that have its culmination next Sunday when we celebrate the resurrection of Christ on Easter. The prophet Isaiah, in his book, penned a number of different servant songs which may have applied to the nation of Israel as a whole, but could also be seen from our perspective in history as prophetic. Prophesying a time when God would send his servant into this world to suffer and to experience scorn and rejection for our benefit. From the writings of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 50, verses 4 through 9. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen to those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious, I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? All of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. And this is our Old Testament lesson. In Psalm 31, the psalm is divided into three laments, three declarations of sorrow, each referring to different groups of people. Verses 1 through 8 plead for protection against intending trouble, impending trouble. Verses 9 through 12, which make up the bulk of this morning's portion, are the petition of those who are afflicted with disease. How appropriate is that for us who worship in an empty sanctuary because of a pandemic? And then verses 13 through 16 is the voice of one who has been persecuted. Psalm 31, verses 9 through 16. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eye wastes away from grief, my soul and body also. For my life is spent with sorrow and my years with sighing. My strength fails because of my misery and my bones waste away. I am the scorn of all my adversaries, a horror to my neighbors an object of dread to my acquaintances. Those who see me in the street flee from me. I have passed out of mind like one who is dead. I have become like a broken vessel. For I hear the whispering of many, terror all around, as they scheme together against me, as they plot to take my life. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Paul wrote his letter to the Philippians as a pastor to a dear congregation. And in it, he talked about the action of Christ 
on their behalf. And in the portion of that letter we have this morning, we have what may be one of the earliest hymns in the Christian church, and it was written by Paul himself. It was the basis for the earliest creed, Jesus is Lord. Christ is seen as a divine figure who puts aside the glory and majesty that is due to him and instead empties himself. He makes himself as nothing, emptying himself of all his glory and honor so that he might become the servant of God. From Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. St. Paul writes, Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself, and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is our second lesson. It is our custom here at Grace not to follow the lead of many Protestant churches, who, noting a decline in attendance at Good Friday worship services, incorporate the story of Jesus' crucifixion into their Palm Sunday morning worship. To that I say, crock of beans. We celebrate Jesus' arrival into Jerusalem today, and we will gather again on Friday to once again hear the story about the price that was paid for our forgiveness. Now, since you're not here today, and since you are home, probably by yourself or with one or two other people, nobody will be there to hear you if you shout, Hosanna! Which is exactly what I'm going to ask you to do. When we get to the point in the Gospel lesson where the people shout, Hosanna! Which means, come save us, God. I want you to shout, Hosanna! Or, praise the Lord! Or, hallelujah! Whatever seems appropriate to you. Let's go Yankees! No, wait, no, no. Don't do that. Let's, let's stick with the biblical stuff. From the Gospel of Mark, the 11th chapter, beginning at the first verse. Glory to you, O Lord. When they were approaching Jerusalem, at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say, the Lord needs it, and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus, and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 